All right. Uh, well, uh, it's a great pleasure to be back at MSRI. And um, yeah, I need to apologize because I, in the abstract, I promised lots of stuff. And obviously, I'm not going to get to it. Uh, uh, so I'm supposed to give this introductory talk on shifted symplectic geometry. And so I, uh, I'll, it will take quite a bit of time to, to, to introduce the subject and uh, uh, talk about uh, some of the interesting results in it. And I apologize to the many people in the audience who have heard this story many times over. Uh, I, I was hoping to talk about some interesting, very recent applications. Uh, and I might still mention a couple of them if I have time at the end. But uh, I really won't have time to cover any of this in any uh, reasonable way. So I'll uh, postpone this until the March workshop, where we can talk about applications uh, in detail. Um, OK, so let me start. Um, this is a, a, a long story based on several joint works with uh, subsets of uh, many people, uh, Kalak, Kazarkov, Toyn, Vesozzi, and Vaki. And so I'm going to introduce the, the concept of a shifted symplectic structure and talk about just shifted symplectic geometry uh, uh, as it appears in derived geometry, talk a little bit about derived Darboud theorems and uh, their consequences, uh, introduce some interesting examples. And at the end, uh, if I have time, I'll mention a couple of recent applications. So. <coughs> So here is where we start. Uh, we're trying to do sh symplectic geometry in the algebraic context. And most of the time, in fact, all the time, except for a tiny bit at the end when I will mention an application, I'll work over a field of characteristic 0, in fact, over C. Um, and uh, so you know, if we have a smooth algebraic variety or a scheme over the complex numbers, a symplectic structure, we understand it very well. It's going to be an algebraic two-form, uh, which is closed. And it's non-degenerate in the usual sense, such that when you contract the tangent sheaf with it and map to the cotangent sheaf, you get an isomorphism. Now, if you want to do this in a, uh, 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 in a reasonably wild wide context where we are studying moduli problems, uh, uh, we know that moduli, solutions to moduli problems, even when they exist in some uh, algebraic geometric sense, they tend to be very singular, or they tend to have uh, uh, stacky uh, uh, homotopical ambiguities in their, uh, 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 in their points, or they tend to have uh, interesting neopotents uh, uh, in higher homological degrees in the, in the function theory. So they tend to be derived. And so if you're trying to understand what symplectic geometry is for singular spaces or stacks or derived spaces or derived stacks, you can't really work with the tangent shift and the cotangent shift. They're too crude. So you need to really promote those to the tangent complex and the cotangent complex. And I know Benjamin spent quite a bit of time explaining the cotangent complexes uh, 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 and the mechanics of them in, in derived geometry. Uh, uh, maybe just so that we have some examples in mind, uh, let me repeat a little bit of, a, of the stuff. So if you have a derived stack over the complex numbers and you have a closed point, the stock of the, of the tangent complex, which you can, in fact, you can define it for pre-stacks, it is the uh, normalized chain complex that the dot can correspondence assigns to the simplicial abelian group, which is the homotopy fiber of the map of points of your stack over the dual numbers to points over the complex numbers. And uh, if x happens to be a modulized stack, then, then the, the cohomology shifts of the tangent complex, they have clear deformation theoretic uh, uh, meaning. Uh, the minus one cohomology shift is the infinitesimal automorphisms of the object that uh, we are studying, that the module is classifying. The zeroth uh, cohomology shift is the infinitesimal deformations of that object. And the higher cohomologies, uh, the first one contains the obstructions, uh, and you, know, you can interpret all elements in it 
really uh, cleanly in the derived setting. Um, so this is the tangent complex and uh, like the typical examples and we should keep most of those examples in mind because they'll come up in the symplectic setting very soon. Uh, uh, so if we have just an ordinary stack, which is the classifying stack of an affine algebraic group, the quotient of the group by, of, of, the, of a point by the group, then the tangent complex uh, uh, has only one stock and it is uh, the Lie algebra sitting in homological degree minus one. And uh, <clears throat> another situation where you can really write cleanly an elementary, in an elementary way the, the tangent complex is if you take the derived intersection of two, say, smooth sub-varieties in a smooth variety. So if you have a smooth variety M and two smooth sub-varieties in it, uh, you can take the uh, derived scheme, which is the intersection of the two, so the substrate uh, as a space is just the intersection, and the structure shift is the derived tensor product of the structure shifts over the structure shift of the ambient variety. Now, the tangent complex, uh, it has uh, two pieces, one in homological degree zero, one in homological degree one, uh, and uh, uh, these are just the direct sum of the tangent spaces to the smooth sub-varieties, and this is the tangent space to the ambient variety. The degree zero cohomology uh, uh, of the tangent complex is the, the, uh, the risky tangent space to the intersection. Uh, the degree one cohomology measures the failure of transversality of the intersection. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, you can look at the moduli of vector bundles of perfect complexes on a smooth projective variety. The tangent complex to that moduli at the point is just the uh, 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 co co-chains derived global sections of, of the endomorphism shift shifted by one uh, and you can do maps from a variety and one smooth variety to another the tangent complex is just the derived global sections of the push forward of the tangent shift or you can do a uh, moduli of flat bundles or local systems on a compact manifold uh, and the tangent complex is just the derived global sections, again, of the endomorphism uh, local system shifted by one. So you have a good understanding of the tangent complex uh, 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 when you can compute it. Uh, you have uh, many examples. And for the cotangent complex, you all already saw many examples of that. So if you have a commutative differential graded algebra, and you look at the derived scheme, the affine derived scheme, which is the derived spectrum of that, uh, which has this function theory, you compute the, the tangent complex by taking just the Keller differentials over a cofibrant replacement of the algebra, which is just a semi-free resolution. Uh, and uh, uh, for non-affine schemes, the, the cotangent complex is given as the co-limit over all test maps from affine schemes to, uh, to the given derived stack, derived scheme. And that gives you, so this is the, the uh, it's a complex of quasi-coherent shifts. It's in the DDG category of quasi-coherent OX modules. Uh, and uh, when X is locally a finite presentation, or you can take this as the definition, then this complex is perfect. And in this case, the tangent complex also exists, and it's the, the, the derived dual of the cotangent complex. So, um, so we have to, to use those guys in order to talk about the symplectic geometry. Uh, so we can say uh, that uh, at least the first proxy for a symplectic structure in this world is going to be some quasi-isomorphism between the tangent complex and the cotangent complex which we are going to try and interpret as a, um, uh, so it, it has to be skew-symmetric, so we will try and interpret it as a section in the second wedge power of the cotangent complex. Uh, but now you run into a second, uh, well, one, one trouble that you notice already on this level, uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, sections in which two of the cotangent complex giving you a uh, contraction map from the tangent to the cotangent, which is a quasi-isomorphism. Uh, the, the problem that you notice is that the tangent and the cotangent complexes are dual, uh, uh, and if they do not have symmetric amplitudes, then the tangent and the cotangent complex will not have 
the same amplitude. So you can't possibly expect a quasi-isomorphism between those. Uh, so that's one trouble you have to deal with. Uh, the other trouble is that um, if you want to say what, what it means for such a quasi-isomorphism to be closed, uh, you need to actually understand what closeness means for forms uh, in the derived or stacky setting. And uh, that turns out to be a little bit subtle because now it's not a condition it's not a property of the forms, but it's a property of extra structure that you need to impose on the forms. And um, so let me talk about that a little bit. So here is, uh, here is how you package this so that you can really work with it concretely. Um, if, if you start with a smooth scheme or a variety over the complex numbers, you can think about the sheaf of closed algebraic forms of degree p uh, uh, in, in a, well, you can think about it in a concrete way as the kernel of the Dram differential. But it's also quasi-isomorphic to the stupid truncation of the algebraic Dram complex. Uh, and if you take the stupid truncation of the algebraic Dram complex as the model for closed p forms, this is actually something that behaves very well homotopically, uh, and so you can use it uh, uh, in the derived setting or in the stacky setting, and you can use it to do descent with it. So uh, uh, you can, if you take uh, an affine derived scheme, the, the, the spectrum of a DJ algebra, uh, you can define uh, the Hodge filtration on the Uh, uh, you can define forms of arbitrary degree by just wedge powers of the, uh, uh, of the cotangent complex. So these are complexes. The forms of, of degree P are a complex again, the same way the, the forms of degree 1 are a complex. Um, and uh, you can think about the, the, the wedge powers, the, the direct sum of the wedge powers of the Deram complex, of, of the cotangent complex, as a bicomplex of in the, sitting in the fourth quadrant. It has a vertical differential, which is the um, uh, inner differential corresponding to the cofibrant uh, semi-free resolution of our DG algebra. And it has a horizontal differential, which is the Deram differential on forms. And so there is a Hodge filtration, which is just the usual Hodge filtration. Uh, the cute piece is just the sum of everything in degree P, which is still a the, 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 the cute step of the Hodge filtration is still a bicomplex, which is in the fourth quadrant. And then you can talk about closed forms over your DG algebra. This is going to be the sum of the steps of the Hodge filtration, uh, but you know you need to totalize this bicomplex uh, with respect to the direct product um, because there is nothing that says that it's finite. Uh, uh, and uh, you can also shift that. So you can talk about not just closed forms of degree p, but you can talk about closed forms of degree p, which are shifted by any integer n. And that's just taking the same totalization, but inserting a shift by n in any step. And then again, you get an analog of the, uh, of the Hodge filtration, which is just uh, a tower of, of complexes, which are these total complexes uh, uh, going for, by form degree from degree zero up and to the left. So explicitly, if you want to understand in the affine case an, an n-shifted p form, uh, 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 and you want to understand when is it closed, uh, well, an n-shifted form is just going to be uh, 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 a global section in the complex omega p comma n. Uh, but the name shifted closed T form, it's actually an infinite collection of guys. Uh, they are forms omega i, which are global sections in the complex omega p plus i comma n minus i uh, in, in, the, in the shift, omega p plus i comma n minus i. These are the terms of the, of the uh, complex of P forms. And they have to be closed in the bicomplex, in the total complex of the bicomplex. So, the, the RAM differential of the i guy has to be minus the inner homological differential of the i plus first guy. 
So one way to get a closed P form or N shifted closed P form is to just have the omega zero, which is a, a, a section in omega P comma N, and require that to be there unclosed. But that gives you actually very few uh, uh, forms to work with. Uh, so, uh, 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 so those will be certainly P forms, but those are somehow closed P forms, which are and, and shifted P forms, which are strictly uh, uh, killed by the Deram differential. And those are way too rigid, and there are very few of them in general. But if you allow all those guys as the extra structure, all this collection, so that the, the collection is closed as an element in the total complex, then, uh, uh, then you get many closed P forms. So all the higher order terms, the terms of, uh, of degree corresponding to shifts of degree one or higher, uh, this is just some mechanism, some homotopy, which allows you to close your form, which naively may not be closed, and we call it a key. So it's the key that closes that form. And uh, the point is that this extra structure is part of, uh, of the data of what a closed form is, and the collection of such structures may not be uh, contractible. It may be something that uh, uh, you need to study, and things may depend on those choices. So here are some uh, comments. If you take the complex of zero clause forms uh, on an affine guy, uh, then you have an underlying P form map. You can take this whole collection that we had here and forget the key. Just keep the degree zero piece. So that will be a, that will be a P form, N shifted P form. It will be a section in the P to H power of the cotangent complex shifted by N. And uh, so that induces uh, a map on cohomologies. So in particular, a closed zero form, uh, uh, which is say, uh, uh, or, or a closed uh, N shifted P form, gives you a section in the N cohomology of the P to H power of the cotangent complex, an element in the N cohomology of the P to H power of the cotangent complex. And as I said, so I just wrote this, this remark that I just made, uh, that the complex of keys could be complicated. Uh, uh, and so this is really a, a, an extra data that you need to keep track of. And um, this globalizes, uh, uh, which requires some work. Uh, so if you look at the assignment that sends an affine derives him to a simplicial set and sends a the affine derives him to the uh, um, complex of P forms uh, shifted by N and uh, it's dot can. Uh, uh, um, uh, it, it's it's uh, to, to, to geometric realization. Then this uh, is an infinity functor and uh, you can do it with, with close to close, close P forms and uh, the remark is that these assignments are actually stacks, derived stacks for that tau topology. And the underlying P form map that sends closed forms to forms uh, that forgets the key, it's a map of derived stacks. It's compatible with the tau descent. Um, and um, so you can now construct spaces of closed P forms. These are just the mapping spaces. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 from X to these derived stacks um, in the, in the uh, category of derived stacks. And you have shifted versions of N shifted P forms and N shifted closed P forms. Uh, and actual forms are elements in the homotopy groups of these spaces. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, one remark is that if X is a smooth scheme, then there are no forms of negative shifts. They're all contractible. And if X is a derived affine scheme, there are no positively shifted forms. But if X is general, then there are shifted forms uh, for essentially any possible shift. Okay, so now, uh, if you look at the map that sends a closed and shifted P form to 
an n shifted p form. It's not a monomorphism. It can have non-contractible fibers, which are the spaces of keys. Uh, but if x happens to be a smooth and proper scheme, non-derived, then the map is a monomorphism. The fibers are contractible. So you don't get anything new except that uh, you've taken your forms and you've distributed them in, in different uh, uh, homological degrees. Um, there is also a result that allows you to, to compute these things globally uh, efficiently. Uh, uh, and that result says that if X is a derived Artin stack, then the complex of N shifted P forms uh, is the mapping uh, uh, stack of, uh, um, from the structure sheath to the complex of, uh, uh, from the, to the p power of the cotangent complex shifted by n uh, in the cut category of quasi coherent sheaths on X. And so you can think about n shifted p forms as cohomologies in, uh, in here. Um, Uh, a few elementary examples. So if you have an ordinary underived affine scheme, then the complex of closed and shifted P forms is just the uh, intelligent truncation of, uh, of the algebraic Deram complex at degree N, and then shift the degrees to the left uh, to be become non-positive. Uh, so it's... Um, uh, it's uh, pi zero is zero if the shift is negative. If the shift is not there, if we are not shifting, it's just the module of closed p forms on our affine scheme. And if the shift is posi positive, it's just the m plus p deramco homology of the affine scheme. And this causes a little bit of a grief, so you have to be careful how you write elements in, 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 in these guys. Uh, when you talk about closed shifted forms. Because if you take, for example, the punctured affine line, uh, you can think about the form dz over z as a closed one shifted, uh, closed degree one zero shifted form. Or you can think about it as a closed degree zero one shifted form. Uh, so these are two very different creatures, but they are represented by the same type of, uh, uh, of uh, the, the, the RAM. Uh, 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 you know, derivations of functions. Um, if uh, X is a smooth and proper scheme, again non-derived, then the i-th homotopy group of the complex of uh, degree P closed and shifted forms, it's just the p step of the Hodge filtration in cohomology of degree M plus P minus I. Uh, if you look at a higher stack, but no derived structure, and you represent that stack uh, uh, by uh, simplicial uh, uh, affine scheme up to, uh, uh, up to molecular equivalence, then uh, the forms, the global forms of degree P shifted by N are just the N uh, Czech cohomology of the complex of algebraic P forms with the Czech differential for the simplicial resolution. And so in particular, if you want to understand the global degree P forms shifted by N of the classifying stack of a group, then you get zero if N, the shift is not equal to P, and you get the algebra, the full algebra of G invariant functions on the Lie algebra in degree P, in, in shift P. And similarly, you can compute closed forms uh, and uh, uh, if you do the computation, uh, then you get that the global closed P forms on the classifying stack of a group shifted by N are zero if N is odd. And if N is even, they are the invariant polynomials on the Lie algebra of degree P. So this is relevant to our symplectic geometry discussion because if you're looking at two forms which are closed, maybe shifted, then you get on the classifying stack of a group global shifted two forms for even shifts, and they all correspond to invariant quadratic forms on the Lie algebra. Okay. Uh, 
Here is an, another example. Uh, uh, if you take a section in a vector bundle uh, on a smooth variety L, and you look at the derived critical locus of that section. So that's a derived scheme for which the structure shift is just the Kuzu complex for the section. Uh, the cotangent complex, uh, I mean, you can write various models for it, but somehow the minimal size model you can write uh, is if you take Z to be the underived critical locus, uh, sorry, a zero locus of the section, uh, then you can choose locally a flat algebraic connection on E, uh, and then the cotangent complex has two pieces in degree zero and degree one, in degree one, it's just the one forms on the ambient guy restricted to the zero locus. In degree minus one, it's uh, the dual vector bundle restricted to the zero locus. And the map is the contraction with the covariant derivative of the given section that cuts out the zero locus. So you need the connection for that. Uh, um, uh, but in fact, um, mm, uh, uh, you know, if you... Uh, uh, if you pull back uh, 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 shift theoretically to the zero locus, this doesn't depend on the connection, and these complexes are quasi-isomorphic on local patches, strictly. Um, uh, but you can write this as a module over the Kuzu complex, which is the structure shift of this uh, derived scheme, and it's just given by this double complex. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so this is the, 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 the top row is just the Kuzu complex tensor with omega 1L, and the bottom row is the Kuzu complex tensor with E dual. And the maps are given by the connection. And uh, you can describe also two forms. So, you know, the, 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 the global sections in this are the one forms. You can describe two forms. Uh, they're given by elements in the, the, the wedge power of the cotangent complex the way we describe it. And again, you can describe it as a module over the Kuzu complex. It's now a, a, a complex with three rows. And uh, two forms of degree minus one are the guys that correspond to these two pieces. So they correspond to uh, elements in the dual vector bundle tensor with the one forms and elements in the dual vector bundle tensor with the two forms. And uh, then you can describe what the closed forms are in this case. So the Deram differential uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the derived critical locus, it's a sum of two pieces. One is given by the covariant derivative with the connection. The other is given by the Kuzu contraction. And uh, so here is an important, very important and uh, uh, illuminating remark uh, uh, by Kai Berendt. Uh, uh, that uh, if you take the bundle to be the cotangent bundle itself, then the section is a one form. Uh, and then a two form of degree minus one on the derived zero locus of that one form corresponds to a pair of elements. One is in the tangent bundle tensor, the two forms. The other is in the tangent bundle tensor, the one forms. And they have to satisfy this relation for, for the form to be closed. So the... Uh, uh, commutator of the connection with the contraction with the section applied to phi should be the contraction of the section applied to alpha. And if you take phi to be the identity, uh, uh, the endomorphism of the tangent bundle, and choose the connection to be torsion-free, again, locally you can do that, uh, then this just says that uh, the image of the identity by this commutator is the derivative of that one form. Uh, and so this says that a one form, uh, which is in the, you know, contraction, it's an element in, in tan tangent bundle tensor with the two forms. So that's the, 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 the cotangent bundle. So a one form comma the identity gives a two form of degree minus one if and only if uh, um, uh, the contraction with with the one form S, which gives the derived critical locus, is the derivative of S. So that just means that the derivative of S restricted to the, uh, uh, to the zero locus of the one form S is zero. So that's what Berend calls a almost close one form. So this being almost close really means that it's close, this data alpha identity is closed in the derived sense. 
and you can actually compute here the complex of keys uh, completely. Um, okay, so now I need to go back. Uh, um, okay, now going back to the symplectic geometry, uh, we have some understanding of what being a form means. We have some understanding of what being a one form, uh, a close two form means. Now you can define symplectic structures in this context. So if you have a derived art in stack, which is locally a finite presentation, that means that the, the, the cotangent complex is perfect. Then an N shifted two form uh, is just going to be a, a section in the second wedge power of the cotangent complex shifted by n. So uh, um, contraction with that will give you a map from the tangent complex to the end shift of the cotangent complex. And now you need this shift to make the amplitudes of these two guys being the same. And you'll say that it's non-degenerate if this contraction is now a quasi-isomorphism. So if you want to understand symplectic geometry, you really need to do shifted symplectic geometry. You need to work with shifted two forms because otherwise you have no ch chance of, of, uh, of your forms being non-degenerate uh, in general. Uh, uh, but yeah, if you have a non-degenerate form, you can ask when is it a symplectic form, and you say it's a symplectic form if it's uh, up to some key that you need to choose a close two form. So the way you say that is you say that you take the complex or the space of global clause two forms, which are n-shifted, map them to global clause two forms, which are n-shifted, and take the fiber product with global clause two forms, which are n-shifted and non-degenerate. So these are the symplectic n-shifted forms. This space, this homotopy fiber product, is the space of symplectic n-shifted forms. And... Uh, this actually is, uh, has a very interesting modular meaning because the non-degeneracy condition uh, uh, that said that the tangent complex and the shifted cotangent complex are isomorphic, uh, it gives you a duality between positive directions in the tangent complex and uh, negative directions, uh, positive directions in the cotangent complex and negative directions. And these are the ones that are responsible for the stackiness and for the derived function theory. Uh, so the symplectic forms, they, they give you a way of exchanging, trading off symmetries for functions. Uh, and uh, so having these symplectic structures is a very interesting uh, 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 geometric, uh, 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 geometric uh, uh, st structure that, that you can study. And if you take, say, GON or any reductive group, then the classifying stack of that reductive group will have a canonical two-shifted symplectic structure, uh, uh, which, as we said, they those all correspond to uh, uh, invariant quadratic polynomials on the Lie algebra, and we have non-degenerate uh, 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 bilinear pairings on the Lie algebra of a reductive group. And uh, so for GON, it's just the usual killing form. And those actually turn out to be closed. So it's a really two-shifted symplectic structure. In fact, the, case of the, the space of keys in this case is trivial, so there is no ambiguity of choosing the closed form. Um, and uh, another example, which is kind of cheap, uh, is uh, take a cotangent bundle of a scheme uh, and shift it. So take the vector space directions in that scheme and place them in homological degree minus n. So this is the, uh, you take the DG algebra, which is the symmetric algebra of the tangent complex uh, or of the tangent sheaf shifted by minus n, uh, um, and view it as a differential graded algebra with zero differential. And so this has a canonical symplectic form, but it, if you shift the tangent fiber, then it becomes n-shifted. And so here, two constructions uh, that allow you to start with these elementary, very basic examples and construct many more examples of shifted symplectic spaces, moduli spaces in particular. So if you have a derived art in stack and you have 
uh, uh, which is symplectic, n shifted symplectic, and you have uh, derived stack X, which has a mild technical assumption uh, called O compact. So it just essentially means that uh, for every perfect complex, the derived global sections are uh, finite dimensional. Uh, so if it has this compactness property, and it has an orientation on the derived functions of dimension D, uh, so a, a map from the derived functions to uh, the constant shift shifted by minus D, which satisfies the analog of cell duality, um, then uh, if you take the mapping stack from X to F, the, the stack, the moduli of all maps from X to F, that turns out to be, if, if, it, if it's a, representable nicely. If it's a derived art stack locally finite presentation, then these guys carries a canonical n minus d shifted symplectic structure, which is built out of the n shifted symplectic structure on the target and the orientation on the source. And uh, so this is some uh, algebraic geometric version of uh, 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 construction of uh, uh, Alexandrov, Kuntsevich, Schwartz, and Zaboronsky in, in quantum field theory. Um, and um, uh, it uses as an essential input this uh, uh, orientation data. Uh, uh, and for example, if X was just an ordinary scheme, the orientation data will be just a calabi aus structure of dimension D because you want ser duality, the ser, ser functor to be trivial. Uh, but you get many more examples. For instance, if you take a topological manifold, which is compact and oriented and of dimension D, uh, then uh, viewing it as a constant uh, 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 stack over uh, uh, the site of affine derived schemes, uh, it satisfies that the orientation gives you an orientation of dimension D, uh, and this is just Poincaré duality for your compact oriented manifold. So you get many more examples of, of, uh, uh, of guys like that. Uh, and uh, so, so these mapping stacks, these moduli of maps from oriented, all oriented derived stacks to symplectic stacks gives you, and you can take, for example, the target to be BG. So that says that if you have an all oriented, uh, uh, like Calabi-L derived stack X, the moduli of G bundles on it is naturally symplectic. Uh, in fact, D minus, uh, two minus D shifted symplectic. And so that's one construction. The other construction is um, uh, coming from Lagrangian intersections. So if you have a shifted symplectic stack uh, and you have a map to it, uh, you can say what an isotropic structure on that map is. Uh, an isotropic structure is just going to be uh, uh, a path, uh, a homotopy uh, 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 between the closed two form, which is the pullback of omega via f, uh, this is in x, in the source, and zero. And then you can say what, an what it means for an isotropic structure to be Lagrangian. It's the usual statement that says that this path is going to induce by contraction, a map from the relative tangent complex of F to the cotangent complex of X, shifted now by one more. And you want that to be a, a quasi-isomorphism. So for instance, if you take a smooth Lagrangian in an affine symplectic variety, in a zero-shifted symplectic scheme, uh, that would be a Lagrangian in this sense. That's what this definition is mimicking. And, uh, but you get other things, so for instance, if you take a point, the point has only one, is symplectic, but has only one symplectic structure, which is the zero closed form, but you can put it in any homological degree you want. So if you put it in homological degree n plus one, if you make it an n-shifted symplectic point, then a map from X to the n-shifted symplectic form point, a Lagrangian structure, the n plus one shifted symplectic point, a Lagrangian structure on that is just an n-shifted symplectic structure on X. So Lagrangian structures are some fairly flabby generalization of shifted symplectic structures. And the other construction of shifted symplectic structures comes from intersecting Lagrangians. So if you have a shifted and shifted symplectic stack, derived art in stack, and two Lagrangians 
in it. So two guys mapping to it with Lagrangian structures. Then the homotopy fiber product, the intersection of those two, carries a natural n minus one shifted uh, 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 symplectic structure. Um, so in particular, if you take a zero shifted space scheme or a delin manford stack, and you take two Lagrangians in it, so usual symplectic scheme and two Lagrangians in it, the derived intersections of those will have a canonical minus one shifted symplectic structure. And uh, the most important special case is when you take derived critical loci. So if you have a, a global function on a smooth symplectic, uh, on a smooth delin manford stack Y, not symplectic, doesn't have to be symplectic, uh, then the cotangent bundle of that stack is symplectic. Then the, 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 the differential of the global function gives you a section in the cotangent bundle. The zero section is a section, so these are two Lagrangians. Their derived intersection is the derived critical locus of, uh, of F. So it's the critical locus which is with the derived structure given by the Kuzul complex, which is the contraction with DF. And that thing is automatically minus one shifted symplectic uh, because uh, the cotangent bundle is zero shifted symplectic. And uh, maybe it's a good place to remind you that this mapping space construction in particular said that uh, if you take a Kawabi out trifold X and you look at um, the principal G bundles for some reductive group G on that Calabi L trifold as a derived moduli problem. Then this carries uh, uh, two minus three, which is minus one shifted symplectic structure. So the principal G bundles, the derived moduli of principal G bundles on, on a Calabi L trifold is minus one shifted symplectic. And also derived critical loss of functions are minus one shifted symplectic. And there is an interesting connection here because uh, we know that formally locally, the uh, principal G bundles on the Calabi L trifold are given as the derived critical locus of the holomorphic churn simus functional. So you have one derived structure and one minus one shifted symplectic structure coming from the derived critical locus realization. And then you have another one coming from the moduli realization. And there is an interesting comparison theorem that says that the two are the same. Um, okay. Now, okay, I'm really behind. So let me just quickly say something about the boot theorems. So in classical symplectic geometry, the local structure of a symplectic manifold is described by other boot theorem. Uh, so a symplectic structure is locally, say, in the C infinity or analytic setting, uh, or formally in the algebraic setting, isomorphic to the standard symplectic structure on a cotangent bundle. That's the usual formulation of the Derbu theorem. Uh, in the derived, uh, the Stucky setup, this doesn't quite work because, just to begin with, there are two natural incarnations of n-shifted symplectic cotangent bundles. One is just the n-shifted symplectic cotangent bundle. The other is the derived critical locus of n, n plus one shifted function. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, the n shifted cotangent bundle is a special case of a derived critical locus because you can take a constant function for which the derivative is zero or the zero function, and that will give you the, the shifted cotangent bundle. And so these two things are fairly easily seen that are not locally equivalent, but since the second one is more general, you can take this as your uh, uh, model uh, uh, for local picture of the shifted symplectic structures. And, uh, uh, and this leads to this uh, 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 beautiful version of the shifted Darbu uh, 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 theorem. Uh, due to Ben Basad, Brav, Bussi, and Joyce. Uh, and I, I didn't state it in its uh, 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 most general form, uh, but 
for my discussion, this is enough, and this is plenty general already. So if you have a derived delin manford stack, and you have an n-shifted symplectic form with a negative shift uh, uh, on x, then at all locally, it's isomorphic to the derived critical locus of a n plus 1 shifted function on some derived scheme m locally a finite presentation. And very often, you actually need this uh, in order to do uh, a specific um, uh, analysis of, of behavior in families, or if you want to do an enumerative applications, you want to, to have this globally, not just at all locally, but maybe the risky locally or maybe globally. And uh, so you can ask what additional geometric structures you need on the derived stack to ensure that this uh, realization as a derived critical locus of a function, so it's essentially a cotangent bundle globally with a small correction coming from a function, uh, actually happens globally. And uh, it turns out that you can answer this question completely. Uh, so if X is a derived stack, which is locally a finite presentation, and you have an n-shifted symplectic structure, if it happens to be globally the derived critical locus, then the symplectic structure will have to be automatically exact, because on the cotangent bundle, the, the symplectic structure is exact. So its class in the deram, deram, derived Deramco homology has to be zero. Uh, and it also turns out that if it happens to be a derived critical locus, it's equipped, the, the, the derived critical locus is equipped with an isotropic foliation. In fact, it's equipped with a Lagrangian foliation. And so you can reverse this statement. The statement is that if the symplectic structure is exact, and if the symplectic stack has uh, an isotropic foliation, then you can look at the formal symplectic stack, formal, formal stack, which is the quotient by that foliation, and then there exists a shifted function on that quotient so that the map from x to the derived critical locus of that function is symplectic. And in fact, if the foliation is Lagrangian, you can argue that that map from x to the derived critical locus on that quotient is also a tau. So this is a kind of a Newton normalization, or actually the boot theorem for, uh, 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 for global, the boot theorem for symplectic, uh, derived symplectic um, guys. And I'm not going to, I have a bunch of examples which I'm going to skip, uh, uh, but uh, I want to show you two interesting ones. Um, Mm -hmm. I know. We have 10 minutes, right? Yeah. But yeah, the examples would have taken 10 minutes. So I'm not going to... Yeah, so I want to show you some examples which are interesting. Uh, so one, one thing you can do is you can define, actually, chern simons functionals in higher dimension. So by using these uh, uh, um, uh, global Darboot theorems. So if you have a compact oriented C infinity manifold of odd dimension, uh, you can choose a Morse male function. Uh, so it's a self-indexing Morse function. Uh, each critical point uh, has value, the, the function has value, the index of that critical point. And uh, you can take, uh, uh, um, uh, any regular value in between the two middle critical values, k and k plus 1, k is half the dimension. Um, and uh, then you can take the, uh, the, the 2k plus 1 manifold with boundary, which is the preimage of the half ray going to negative infinity. Uh, and so this is a submanifold inside M with boundary, uh, uh, and it induces a homotopy equivalence between that submanifold. The inclusion induces a homotopy equivalence between that submanifold and the k-dimensional skeleton of M. And now, if you fix any complex reductive group G, and you look at all local systems, G local systems on M, as a derived moduli stack then uh, this is 2 minus d-shifted symplectic guy. 
Uh, and as a 2 minus d shifted symplectic guy, you can write it as the derived critical locus of a global function, which if d was 3, would be the would be the chern simons functional, the classical chern simons function. But this works for dimensions 5, 7, and so on. And it, it depends on this uh, um, uh, uh, handle body decomposition. So, um, so what you do is uh, 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 you look at G bundles on M, so these are flat bundles on M, going to flat bundles on, on the manifold with boundary, and this map actually has an isotropic structure, and it depends only on the orientation data on M and the compatible orientation on the boundary and the shifted symplectic form on BG. Uh, and the tangential foliation for this map turns out to be uh, isotropic, uh, and you can quotient by that tangential foliation, and what you get is really uh, uh, you take the, the Deram spaces for the fibers of that map. So these are the quotients of the fibers by the formal neighborhood of the diagonal uh, um, of those fibers in themselves. And so on this guy, there is a, a shifted function of degree 2 minus 2k, and there is a symplectic map from the stack of uh, 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 flat G bundles on M with their symplectic structure to the derived critical locus of that function. So, uh, so this f is the analog of the chern simons function. Uh, another, yeah. Yeah, so, so you need to do, the, do this computation for dimension three. Choose a, handball, choose a more small function and compare with the chern simons function. Uh, in all honesty, we haven't done the comparison, uh, but you know, what else can it be? Uh, 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 I mean, there, there are subtle things which I can tell you about later. Uh, um, not about the comparison, but about the, the, the derived structures. Um, um, okay, so there is another thing you can do, which uh, is do potentials in non abelian Hodge theory. So if you have a smooth projective variety of dimension D, and you consider the derived stack of uh, uh, flat bundles uh, 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 on, on M, flat GLN bundles on M, then uh, by this mapping stack theorem, you can, you can construct an orientation and, uh, uh, on the Deram stack of X and, uh, and prove that this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, moduli of flat bundles on M derived moduli flat bundles on M is 2 minus 2D shifted symplectic. Uh, now you want to say that it's the derived critical locus of a global function. And it, it works because uh, the tangent complex of the derived stack of local system has a Hodge filtration. Uh, uh, the Hodge filtration is given by, uh, um, uh, you know, the, remember the, the, the tangent complex was the endomorphisms of a local system the derived endomorphism of the local system shifted by one, uh, and you have just the, the, in, the, in the endomorphism complex, you have filtration by, the stupid filtration by homological degree. Uh, and um, the map, the, the, symplectic, the symplectic form, the shifted symplectic form is actually a filtered quasi isomorphism. Uh, uh, of, with respect to the Hodge filtrations. And uh, so then what you can do is uh, if you have a, um, a manifold, projective manifold X of odd dimension, odd complex dimension, you can take the middle step of the Hodge filtration on the tangent complex and uh, check that this gives you a Lagrangian foliation on the stack of local systems also on the Higgs moduli. And then quotienting by that will give you a, a shifted function, and the critical locus of that shifted function will be the symplectic form on the stack of local systems. Okay, I actually have, uh, so yeah, I mean, there's some explanation of that, but I'm not gonna go into that. I have five minutes to say a little bit about some 
more recent stuff, uh, 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 which is interesting. And I, I'm just going to do two, two uh, uh, um, stories. Uh, uh, I was planning more, but you know, I don't have time. So one is a story about Donaldson Thomas invariance of abelian tree folds. So if you have a complex abelian variety of dimension three, uh, and you choose a component of the moduli stack of coherent shifts on A, so this is just an ordinary uh, non-derived stack, uh, then we know that it has a symmetric perfect obstruction theory, and you can use that for virtual fundamental classes and do counting of uh, coherent shifts on A. The problem, is, uh, the problem is that these guys usually give you trivial Donaldson-Thomas invariants uh, because uh, you have the deformation invariance of, of Donaldson-Thomas invariants, and um, uh, uh, once you move away uh, uh, in the moduli of complex tori, you can kill all churn classes of these coherent shifts, and uh, so you get zero. So how can you do interesting counts? Well, let's keep in mind that this symmetric perfect obstruction theory can be refined to a minus one shifted symplectic structure. So I didn't say that, but minus one shifted symplectic structures because of this uh, uh, formalism of Berend, they are actually slight refinements of, of uh, symmetric perfect obstruction theories. Um, uh, so how can you extract interesting numbers and meaningful numbers? Well, so this problem was solved by Brian uh, 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 Oberdiek, Pancharipande, and Ian. Uh, so what they said was that you can do meaningful counts of Donaldson-Thomas invariance on a billion trifolds if you modify the obstruction theory. So the, the usual symmetric perfect obstruction theory that comes from the canonical minus one shifted symplectic structure, it gives you zero usually. But it has two uh, uh, parasitic pieces in it. Uh, one in the deformations and one in the obstructions. Uh, they're three-dimensional uh, in the sheaf, in the tangent complex. Um, so they're the obstructions that, that measure the obstructions to deforming the chunk classes to Hodge classes. And then there is a piece in the deformations that comes from vector fields which are coming from the action of A. And those happen to be dual. So uh, what BOPOI did was they argued that if you kill those in the obstruction theory, you still get a reduced symmetric perfect obstruction theory on the quotient of your moduli stack by the billion variety itself, acting by translations. And this new uh, obstruction theory gives you new Donaldson-Thomas invariants, which are non-trivial, in fact, can be computed in terms of Jacobi forms. So they get very interesting formulas. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because this is actually a, a phenomenon in shifted symplectic geometry. So the interpretation of that is that this reduced obstruction theory is really a shadow of the minus one shifted symplectic structure, the canonical one that gives you trivial Donaldson-Thomas invariants. It's just a symplectic reduction of that. So if you take if you promote the stack of uh, coherent shifts to a derived stack of perfect complexes of the same uh, chain classes, so put a derived structure on it that comes from the deformation theory of coherent shifts, then this has a minus one shifted symplectic structure. And then you can repackage the BOPY theorem as the statement that the abelian variety action on this symplectic stack is Hamiltonian. There is an equivariant moment map to the Lie algebra of the abelian variety, which is three-dimensional, shifted by minus one. Uh, and if you take the derived fiber of that moment map and you reduce it by the action of the abelian variety symplectically, you get a new minus one shifted symplectic structure. And the, the obstruction theory that corresponds to that one is exactly the reduced one that they construct. So the one that that they constructed, it, it, it's naturally there uh, as a symplectic reduction of the, uh, of the naive one that, that the deformation theory gives you. Because we have this abelian variety symmetries. And you know, this symplectic reduction is just a derived intersection between the zero section in this Lie algebra module, the, the abelian variety, which is the cotangent stack of the classifying stack of the abelian variety and uh, X, the stack X module A, which, uh, which is also Lagrangian. So the zero section and this guy are both Lagrangian, and their derived intersection is this symplectic reduction. And in fact, the same construction is expected to work. Uh, so they, they 
I mean, you know, if you if you just take their paper and and read their proof, that that, that literally just just proves these three steps. Uh, but they have uh, some very interesting comments in the paper that the same construction is supposed to also give you the standard reduced uh, obstruction theory on a K3 surface. So K3 surface, the, the, the shift theory has a zero shifted symplectic structure. You don't expect a minus one shifted symplectic structure which will give you a, 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 a virtual fundamental class. But we know that there is a reduced one that gives you a virtual fundamental class. And again, it comes by a similar construction conjecturally. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's within epsilon of, of, of a proof, if you seriously think about it. So you can take the K3 surface cross an elliptic curve. So that's a Calabi-L trifold. The shift theory on that has a minus one shifted symplectic structure. Uh, and so you can take shifts which, for which the churn classes are just trivial in the E direction. Uh, so they're really shifts on the K3. And uh, you can reduce symplectically uh, uh, by the action of the elliptic curve. And that should give you the, the, the standard uh, reduced obstruction theory on the K3. And I'm not going to give you the other example because I'm out of time. Uh-huh. You need, yeah. You know, the, you know, all the time your permissions are not all the way. Yeah, yeah. So you want to stay but it's the same with the abelian trifold. Bundle. Yeah. So, so the, the, difference, the difference between the abelian trifold and, and, and uh, the K3 story is that in the abelian trifold, you actually have to quotion the classical moduli space because it, the, uh, the, uh, I mean, the, the need for the reduced theory is uh, you want to keep the sample line bundle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's an auxiliary thing. Uh, uh, so, um, oh yeah, no, that's why I said conjecturally. I mean, this this hasn't been proven, but uh, uh, so in, in the B, uh, in in the Brian uh, Oberdiek and Van Kripande and Jun paper, they they actually make a comment that it should be the same. Uh, I mean, you know, they they don't say it in these terms, but they talk about the, the procedure of reducing the the obstructions and the dual space in the in the action of the elliptic curve. Um, uh, and uh, which, which is the same as the symplectic reduction. Uh, uh, but yeah, I don't think it's been checked, but it's expected. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit mysterious because the usual reduct, reduced obstruction theory for the K3 comes from the twister deformations, right? Or, you know, general lines in the, in the module of K3s. Whereas this one is coming from a trivial deformation, but you're doing a symplectic reduction. But at least it gives you the same size of, of obstruction theory. So it's not unreasonable to expect it. It's the same. Okay. More questions? Well, let's thank the speaker.